Okay, I think we're good to go. Welcome, Kyle. Thank you so much for taking the time today. I see you're in your gym. My very empty gym. My very quiet, <laughs> empty gym. So for the few people listening that don't know, Kyle Schufelt, you're an uh, Olympic gold medalist who, after retiring from competitive gymnastics, opened a one of the leading uh, gymnastics facilities in Calgary. Do you want to tell us just a little bit about your gym and what you guys offer? Yeah. So we... Um... We opened in 2013 and we are focused solely on the foundational experience of gymnastics. So we run recreational and preschool gymnastics programs for all ages from kinder babies up until adults. Fantastic. So obviously you're in a bit of a difficult business um, during these kind of times. So can you tell us a little bit about how everything's affected you over the last couple months? Yeah. So we are essentially right now at a complete pause. Um, we can't run any of our programs. And we've been in this kind of phase since March the 15th. As soon as schools were declared closed in, in Alberta, um, we kind of had to, to shift our, our operations. So yeah, we're just sitting. We're sitting here waiting, <laughs> waiting for our the permission that it's safe to be resume operations um, in some way. And at that point, then we're going to figure out a plan on how we can, we can continue to operate. You know, we opened this facility. It was my dream to open this gym because I wanted to build community and I wanted to foster a love for physical activity. And I wanted to showcase the talents of our amazing staff and coaches. And we've done that so well over the past seven years and it's um you know it's really surreal it's really hard right now I, I'm, I try to be optimistic but right now is a very challenging time um, when you don't know when your timeline is what that looks like yeah definitely yeah that uncertainty uncertainty is very unsettling uh, so what what are you doing to stay positive and keep in a good mindset uh, during this shutdown? <laughs> well, I, I think like everybody, it's a roller coaster ride. Some minutes of the day, I am hopeful and I'm positive and I'm thinking of solutions and things, thinking of ways that we can um, really navigate this in a positive way. And then other moments, I, I feel very frazzled. I feel like I can't focus, like my feet just aren't on the ground. I, I really like to have timelines. I really like to have a goal to work towards. Um, I really like that feeling of, of creating energy and being at the epicenter of that. And that's what we do. So one thing that I'm doing, I've come to realize over the past month that a big part of this business is being of service to others and of teaching. And so today, actually tonight at 6.30, I'm going to be hosting a, a live workout online as a fundraiser for Kids Sport. And that feels really, really good. That's making me happy and excited and I'm doing a lesson plan and I'm going to work out with a group of people and I'm going to be able to like feel like I'm being able to be a leader in that way. That's mm -hmm. the best way that I can give back. And right now being physical, moving my body, going for walks, exercising, getting out of my head and into my body is helping me to stay positive. And I also, um, I, have a, I have a daughter, she's four years old and I'm trying to model for her um what the the behaviors and actions should or not should uh, what what how can i be positive through this i know that she's feeling it she can't articulate it in words but i know she feels like it's weird she can't see her grandma and grandpa she can't like we see them from far away she can't give them hugs she can't go to school she can't go to her swimming to her gymnastics to any of her activities she can't play with her friends so i'm trying to just think of positive fun things to make life fun um, together and just come up with lots of games and, and that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to model the behavior, knowing that she's watching me, but also mm -hmm. that it's okay to feel not okay right now. This is, this is not normal. We, what we are experiencing is something none of us know how to uh, experience because we've never been through it before. Obviously through this, you need to do some degree of planning for the future. How are you approaching that and how are you tackling that? Because like you said, there's so much uncertainty. Yeah, uh, John, I, I wish I had the answer, but I have to be honest, I, I, we are not doing much planning right now. 
because the reality is we don't know what to plan for. And I don't want to waste mm-hmm. energy. Um, I, I like meant so many people I've been talking to. I feel like at first it was high adrenaline and you were just fighting for your business, fighting for your staff, trying to figure it out, trying to get all these answers. And then the dust kind of starts to settle. And I felt very tired. Um, I've had a hard time getting up in the morning. I've had a hard time kind of motivating myself. Um, so right now I'm just being okay with not being okay and just being where we're at. But I know Mm -hmm. as I look forward to the future of this business, I know that we have a lot of amazing coaches who want to coach, who are great at coaching. I know we have a lot of families that have sent us messages saying we will be back. And so I'm just Mm -hmm. trusting in that, that we're in, when it is okay for us to resume operations, whatever way that looks, we're going to be able to put a plan together really quick. The gym is ready to go. We're clean. Um, everything has been repaired that can be repaired. We're trying to, you know, do little upgrades here and there, but in terms of planning, we're just, we're kind of going with the flow right now. Um, I don't want to jump to any conclusions and waste energy making a plan for something that that's what I feel was kind of happening was it was all rapid fire and it was happening so quickly. And then you think that you had it all settled. And then all of a sudden, boom, this thing, kind of came out of nowhere. It was like you're driving down the road full speed with bowling balls dropping on your car. And so I've just made the decision now that we're going to kind of sit tight, wait until we see what um, the government and health authorities say is safe. And at that point, then we will put together a plan that we'll be able to work for our facility and our team. Mm -hmm. We talked with a business owner last week, um, Alex, with Work Nicer, which is a co-working space. And he's kind of in a place where he has a lot of fixed expenses and in a type of business where um, you have a big revenue drop, but the, the operating expenses don't. So what advice do you have for entrepreneurs that have a business with high overhead and like commercial space and stuff like that, that is shut down or close to shut down? Yeah, that's, I think where a lot of the stress comes from is you look at your bank account and you see how much money is in there and you do the calculations quickly in your mind of how much your rent, your utilities, your payroll, your marketing, all the, all the, your internet, your phone, like all of the fixed costs. And what we've done is we've went through the whole list and we vetted which were the criticals, what we need and what are the ones that we could get rid of for the time being pausing. For example, like our cleaners, they do an amazing job, but we pause them Our all of our services um, that are coming in uh, like our first aid kits, like our uh, supplies for bathrooms, that kind of stuff. Like we've, all of that is on pause. And then there's some things that we've kept, we've kept like our MailChimp, for example, we've kept our MailChimp going because we want to keep those lists so that we can stay in contact with all of our members. Um, mm-hmm. Right now I've, I've been talking and trying to figure out with our landlord what that looks like. And I know that each landlord is different and has different priorities, but we plan on being here for a long, long time. And so um, I'm hopeful that our landlord, uh, we can work together in order to come up with a plan of how we move forward and get through this. The reality is, is we, we can't, like us and many fitness and gymnastic facilities where you do have a 10,000 square foot space, that it's not sustainable for m- many months to continue to pay rent and op costs on a facility when you're not bring in any revenue. So I feel very thankful that we have a bit of a nest egg. I'm a saver. My dad is a banker. He taught me to do that. But um, at a certain point, there's going to be nothing left. So I, what the answer to your question, I say cut out the expenses that are not essential right now so that you can have a bit of relaxation there and talk to, um, talk to the, the landlords talk to the people where the big expenses are coming out and see how you can work together. This is, this is about collaboration and it's about um, right now trying to help small, especially small businesses um, save on some of those big expenditures so that they have some cash flow and some runway when things can get going again, because the reality is, is we're not going to have the same numbers uh, come back to our facility because there's going to be a lot of families that are impacted by this um, mm-hmm. their financial situations food and shelter are more important than gymnastics classes. I know that is a reality. So there's so many moving parts. 
Yeah, we talked to a commercial lawyer the the first week when I was doing this series, and he said how important it was to have those difficult conversations with the the landlords and uh, people you're committed to um, as quickly as possible to mitigate those those expenses. Um, and it does sound like the government is looking at rolling out assistance for commercial leases, which would be good, but uh, who knows what's going to happen there, or it might be too little too late. Here's the reality is that this is being mandated by the government. This is being mandated by Health Canada. And and it's very important. We have to do this. But on the same page, we can't have so many small businesses going out of business because they're still paying their rent. That makes absolutely Mm -hmm. sense. So the government, it is their responsibility at this point to come in and and to help relieve some of that. Because the landlords don't, they have mortgages and stuff to pay too. Um, Mm -hmm. But if it's being mandated from government, I think it's the responsibility of government to come in and and help come up with a solution. I just don't want to, I'm fearful that there's going to be a lot of businesses that have to close. And I know a lot of gymnastic clubs across the country that can make this last for a month, maybe two, maybe three at the most. But at that point, if they have to continue paying all of their expenses, then they're going to disintegrate. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a, that'd be a very difficult bill to float that long, right? Um, so what, uh, what have you learned in the last two months that you think is most valuable to you? Um, I, I think that as a business owner, you, can, you always are grateful and you appreciate your business, but you start to kind of take it for granted a little bit that when you walk mm-hmm. through your facility and you see your team and you see all the families, you it just starts to become normal but i i cannot wait until people are back and that's the one thing that i've learned is that what happens here is very special um the energy the excitement the relationships the communication the learning the the sense of community that that is something that i really didn't have my finger on the pulse of until this happened and it was taken away now I am so much more appreciative and grateful for every parent that <laughs> chooses to put their kid in our facility, for every coach that chooses to come here and, um, and lend their talents to our facility. So I certainly am going to be looking at our business through a much different lens. I, I looked at it through a, a positive lens um, always, but now it's like I'm going to really be thankful for everything mm-hmm. that we have. Yeah, that's, uh, that's important. Awesome. Well, uh, do you have anything you'd like to conclude with, Kyle? Um, you know, I think the one thing that I've been, that's brought me comfort is that um, none of us know, and none of us know what we're doing. And so we just have to stick together and share information. And I know that I feel better when I talk to other business owners, when I watch, um, you know, things like you're doing, John, or when I listen to a great podcast, we're all in this together. We're all trying to get our footing. Um, But I think it's really important to give yourself that permission that like some days are going to be good days. Some days are going to be bad days and you might not have a determination of why, but it just is. And so just be in it, be there. And, and that's going to be, I think the, the way that we can move through this is by actually like experiencing the emotions and the things that go along with the uncertainty of this you know it it Mm -hmm. also it reminds me a lot of being an athlete when you retire from sport (laughs) and you no longer have that thing that was such a constant in your life and so you have this opportunity right now to kind of take a step back and to like really prioritize and think why why does that bring me joy why does that um, make me feel happy why like what is it about being bringing a group together what is what is it about that that is special and that and just uh, to appreciate those feelings a little bit more Mm -hmm. yeah i really appreciate your your honesty and your candidness and i think it's going to be very beneficial for other business owners to see that they're not the only ones going through these kind of things um so thank you for that kyle thanks john thanks for having me on my pleasure